two words I try to stay far away from are always and never. Sure, two plus two are always four where theoretical math is concerned. But regarding being human and all the fun things that come with it, absolutes like these are quite unrealistic. Our personalities, our feelings and our experiences are usually somewhere on a spectrum between amazing and disastrous. Notice how I use the word usually and not always. Because sure, losing your home and your extensive stamp collection in a barbecue fire is indeed disastrous. Anyways, a few times I already hinted at avoiding such extremes and finding a healthy balance instead. And in this video I would like to elaborate on that a bit. Actually a lot. Today's entry turns out to be a bit longer than I anticipated. I don't think I have to explain what a healthy balance in life entails. I think we all know it even if we try to ignore nor the hell out of it. A healthy diet lies somewhere between anorexia and overindulgence. A healthy work-life balance is struck where hard work and leisure time coexist in harmony. A healthy relationship means to figure out a middle path between codependency and emotional detachment called interdependence. A healthy body is achieved through a balance of vigorous exercise and quality rest. And a healthy mind is the result of keeping proper distance from both hyperactivity as well as lethargy. Striking that balance is certainly not always easy, because in order to see drastic positive results, we often think that drastic measures are necessary. But most people who have already taken those drastic measures in the past quickly had to come to the realization that the pendulum smacks your right back even more massively the more it has been agitated prior. Think of the yo-yo effect after a crash diet or a lumbago from lifting more than you can momentarily handle just to impress someone. Now it might be tempting to try to avoid these ups and downs altogether and stay stationary, but that would mean that you are dead. It needs to be clear that the pendulum of life swings continuously if you want that or not. It's part of the job description of being human. A permanent equilibrium is unattainable because it's not up to you alone to stay in a balance. Even if, for example, you isolate yourself physically, which I wouldn't recommend. Chances are that at least digitally you get input from other people that can and will tip your balance at some point. You can't meditate internet trolls away, just as you can't evade text collection with wishful thinking. So in order to stay sane and not throw up on this roller coaster, the only thing you can do is to not make it push you around so radically and to pay your taxes on time. Living a balanced life doesn't mean that we are freed from its ups and downs. It just means that neither of those extremes is as severe anymore. And yes, that means that in order to have less devastating lows, we also have to put a damper on the highs. That makes me sound like a party pooper, but hear me out. For every pleasure, we pay a price. And the bigger the pleasure, the higher the price. Because your brain seeks equilibrium, and once again, it does that if you want it or not. If you hang out on the pleasure side, living your best hedonistic life, your brain will counteract that. Neuroscientists call it homeostasis. Your body tries to ensure homeostasis in numerous ways. The most simple being sweating to cool down your body temperature on a hot day. Or releasing insulin when losing self-control over your friends and famous homemade brownies. Now the problem here is that the brain tips the balance always to an equal amount to the opposite direction, without stopping at the midpoint. Which results in a more drastic dip below baseline, the more drastic your level of dopamine spiked above it beforehand. And if that isn't already bad enough in the moment, it gets even worse in the long term. If you expose yourself repeatedly to a high pleasure substance or activity, your brain gets used to leveling it out and actually decreases dopamine reception and increases tolerance to that substance or activity, making you need more and more coffee to get through the day. And that's called neuroadaptation. To get a better grasp on all that, let's have a look at sad dopamine. Dopamine has been regulating our pain pleasure centers since our good old primitive times. Faced with the occasional saber tooth and food scarcity, it played a crucial role for our survival. We had to get pleasure out of actually quite taxing things, like hunting, gathering and caring for our offspring, leading to a dopamine release that reinforced behavior towards actual and long-term well-being, like proper reproduction or plain old self-preservation. 
dopamine. And interestingly, dopamine is not just released when we get the reward. It's already being released in anticipation of the reward. That's a really important detail of this whole reward system because that initial release of dopamine is the reason for our motivation to get all the seemingly good stuff in the first place. And now here comes the crux. Our society has gone through quite the massive change when it comes to pleasure. We live in an absolute abundance of dopamine releasing stimuli and those stimuli are also much easier accessible and much more frequent. Think junk food, social media and online shopping. And while being so readily available, they don't actually serve a purpose in our survival anymore at the same time, which is a memo that our brain unfortunately didn't get. Our gray matter is still kind of primitive in a lot of ways and still acts as if it had to set out hunting mammoths tomorrow with the rest of the cave crew. And thus, it still works relentlessly on balancing out stimuli it doesn't actually have to balance out anymore. When neuroscientists talk about dopamine and neuroadaptation, they often mention the so-called dopamine baseline with it. And that baseline is the midpoint of our teeter-totter, the center between amazing and disastrous that our pendulum swings around so lively. This baseline can increase, which we ideally try to achieve through a bunch of tried and tested methods that I will get to later, but it can also decrease. And as soon as that decrease establishes, you have a serious problem. A decrease is the result of that constant overstimulation and the desensitization that comes with it. We are less and less receptive to stimuli and thus need more and more of those stimuli because our drugs of choice are barely able to keep us satisfied and forget about genuine happiness. The resulting decrease of satisfaction through underappreciation, unmet expectations and choice paralysis triggered by our overabundance is also known as the plenty paradox. You know that an occurrence has become severe when it got its own name. Now, once we have tipped the balance to disastrous for a prolonged time, we might try counteracting it with a compulsive overconsumption of things that give an immediate and intense spike in dopamine aka drugs. And if we don't take action to get to homeostasis again after indulging in those, we might even enter the realms of addiction. And if you now think that addiction is reserved for illegal drugs, then you are gravely mistaken. There are lots of legal ones as well, starting with TikTok, nicotine and porn, just to name a few. As soon as we enter addiction, our drug of choice is not just there anymore to give us pleasure, but to actively stop feeling pain. Or in other words, we are in a state of a chronic dopamine deficit, thanks to that lower dopamine baseline I just mentioned. We start experiencing the typical side effects of withdrawal every time we don't give in to our cravings, which are most commonly anxiety, insomnia, and even depression. And again, the pendulum swings back massively in the opposite direction after your initial euphoria, meaning that the symptoms of withdrawal are getting more severe, which makes it harder and harder to fight against the urge to consume. And in case of long-term addiction to harder substances, it's even straight out dangerous to stop consumption cold turkey, as it can actually lead to death. And if all that doesn't make it hard enough already, you can also stack stimuli. So even if you boost your mood just with the small pleasures in life, if you do all those things at the same time, you might still get an overload of dopamine in the end. It's seriously tough to juggle, I know, but you gotta try lowering your baseline anyway. Because a low dopamine baseline makes you experience less pleasure from the things you once enjoyed. Because it makes you less motivated to do things that are actually good for you. Because your mood swings become as erratic as that dopamine pendulum. Because it makes you suffer much more from the absence of an expected reward like likes on your Instagram account which that cursed algorithm just doesn't make happen. And because the longer you have been given in to a specific craving, the higher the risk of relapse, even after finally staying abstinent for a long period of time. That last thing happens because your brain remembers, which is one of its main functions, so don't demonize it for doing its job. Though it does do a mediocre one at times, which is when we might experience euphoric recall, a phenomenon that describes an altered recollection of an experience into a more positive version. It's what makes us take MDMA again, even though we were absolutely miserable for the next 24 hours after the last time and the time before that. It's what makes us forget about all the negative aspects of an ex, just leaving the good cooking and the sense of humor in our memory, but not the dozens of last minute date cancellations or him moving to Singapore out of the blue after telling you that he loves you.
So what can we do to avoid such extreme dopamine lows and being just one person stopping at the end of an escalator away from losing our self-composure? How do we raise our dopamine baseline to find pleasure in the little things in life again and regain the motivation to do what actually matters? We abstain, maintain and seek out pain. And no, I'm not talking about BDSM. I'm talking about ice baths, exercise and sensory deprivation. In order to not make a Jodorowsky out of this video, I recommend you watch Anna Lemke's lecture on the subject of pleasure and pain to find out more about lowering your baseline. Andrew Huberman has talked at length about dopamine too. The Swedish can chime in here as well with their idea of lagom. And furthermore, you can find a huge array of videos about dopamine detoxes on YouTube, which sounds like a trendy thing to do, but it actually has its merit. It's good to be thrown off balance every so often, which brings us back to the comfort zone that we should try to avoid in order to grow. I talked about that in an earlier video. But it needs to happen in moderation and in a thoughtful manner that makes sense for us and our circumstances. Even the Buddha taught to find a way between pleasure and pain. Unfortunately, it is increasingly easy in today's society to pursue pleasure and increasingly hard to accept pain with all our available conveniences. Thus, we have to consciously seek out pain. As counterintuitive as that may sound, because the greater the pain you induce, the bigger the reward. Or in that case, the dopamine release that is coming from you internally. By paying for our pleasure up front, we ideally don't get to a dopamine deficit in the first place. And on the flip side, if you don't balance out your daily stresses with some daily relaxation, even small things will drive you over the edge. How can you stay calm while having to pick up your partner's dirty socks again from the living room floor when your inner peace is already totally out of whack from your colleagues picking on you for your choice of attire. We need small islands of harmony on a regular basis to bring our mood back to a healthy equilibrium, to be ready to face small annoyances with grace. It's not called running out of patience for no reason, I would say. And as you surely begin to realize by now, it's quite some work to keep life in a balance. It requires constant attention and sacrifice, like a newborn baby or a puppy. So why would we actually want that? The roller coaster of life, I mean, not the puppy. Why going outside and talking to people when we risk overtime and heartbreak? Why picking up a hobby when our fingertips will be busted open by the violent strengths and our eyebrows will catch fire when trying to make creme brulee? You could almost call that self-flagellation. The answer is pretty simple in my opinion. Because it's worth it. Eating creme brulee is worth it. Making music is worth it. Experiencing love is worth it. Life has a lot to offer when you take your time and choose wisely from what's available. You can't have it all without a serious detriment to your physical and mental health, but you can have what is truly important to you and create a balanced and fulfilled life around those few things. What those things are for you, no one other than yourself can tell. But I'm absolutely sure it's not lying in bed until 11 p.m. while refreshing your Instagram feed every 10 seconds. So let the elevator miss you dearly and climb the stairs. Let the bagel slicer on the store shelf and cut your bread by hand. Let me know in the comments in what case 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4. And as always, Stay curious. I'm sorry, but the bagel guillotine is the saddest product I have seen in all of 2023. I have no words left over to describe my disappointment in humanity here. Like proper.